Tuesday morning, an FBI counterterrorism agent wakes up to a massive earthquake. A woman tries to wake up her son Tyler, whom she cannot find at home. Real estate prices are plummeting badly, and it seems the world is beginning to change globally. Trailer finds himself in a clinic because of a nighttime fight. The earthquake increases, causing objects to fall to the floor. Things are much worse in the church, a wooden cross of Jesus falls out of a display case. The head of the church barely manages to roll the wheelchair to the door of the building. The city is covered in a dark veil, causing great panic among the residents. It turns out that a small plane is to blame for this, crashing into the middle of the city. The pilot lands after the plane, but apparently turns up dead. Tyler escapes from the clinic by pulling up to a closed part of the road. A huge blimp covers the skyline of the city, forcing people to evacuate quickly. Our hero is not frightened by the ensuing actions, and he boldly approaches the security guards. One of the guards, trying to get the guy out, because part of the road is not a safe zone. With their sheer mass, the ships could crush several major cities like New York and Los Angeles. People rush to evacuate the occupied cities, but many remain in the closed zone of the city. A mother finds Tyler in a crowd of enforcers, following with a tight hug. The airship's plates abruptly part, presenting a huge monitor. A girl named Anna appears in the video. The chief promises to do no harm. She apologizes for her intimidating behavior for the humans, and rejoices at her arrival. The girl offers innovative technology, replacing pure water, and minerals. These products have become redundant on Earth, making it impossible for mankind to live. The chief claims that after replenishing their resources, minerals, the airship will leave the city. The girl offers to get to know each other better, and announces that she is continuing to communicate with some of the world's leaders. After that, the monitor turns off, and people return home. Recent events have attracted an increase in the number of people of faith. The church is filled with clergy, though previously it was empty. Only drug addicts or delinquent sinners have been visitors. Apparently, what had happened had greatly frightened the people of the town, causing them to flatten out their problems. The boys watched last night's news, and discussed the event that occurred. Tyler's mother, an FBI agent in charge of anti-terrorism investigations, is greatly disturbed by the situation. She calls her colleague to discuss what to do. Visitors, constitute, friends who came to have a little rest in pleasant company. Journalistic meetings, face-to-face -face meetings with Anna, are gaining momentum. Leading people, have the honor to communicate with a non-resident mind, teaching, humanity with new technologies. Three weeks later, the influx of tourists was only increasing. The huge influx of people wishing to visit all the occupied countries had a great impact on the world economy. Open centers, attract large crowds of people. There are a huge number of diseases that only the visitors can cure. Treatment centers and clinics are overflowing. The government began to think about opening visitor embassies, but not all residents like the idea. Mass protests, with threats to the visitors, sweep through many cities. Erica puts forward hypotheses that probably relate to the arrival of the visitor blimps. The center, an anti-addiction center, found a truck with traces of C4, an element of explosives. It came from New Island, which motivates agents to check important facilities. Hours of searching, no success, all 20 leads, were denied. A satellite image showed the agents that the truck was parked near strange barracks. Checking the rusty structures, the agents again found nothing. The old switchboard appeared to be in good working order, which prompted the agents to move on. A long cluttered corridor leads to a room with a bound man. Near the seated dead man, there are entire stores of explosive element. Paradise receives a strange phone call, which is abruptly answered. A girl invites him to lunch, but the calls don't stop bothering his phone. A small plane of visitors flies up to the port, which Tyler, along with his friend, visits. Viewing the blimps, or small V ships, is made possible, after buying tickets. A small plane, flies inside the main ship, where the tour takes place. The perfect world presented inside the ship surprises the viewers, because inside the iron walls, reveals a beautiful city. Their tour guide becomes an attractive girl named Lisa, who Tyler likes. Our agents continue to search the basement room. It turns out that a team of crooks were printing fake passports, and IDs. The agents determined that the guy who was killed, was executed quite recently. In the meantime, Lisa offers Tyler the job of ambassador, in one of the neighborhoods. The girl gets very upset when she finds out what the boys' parents think. It turns out that Lisa runs the New York branch, and wanted to do a little socializing. The rallies continue, the churches gain confidence in the opinions of the aliens who have set foot in human territory. Jake is forced to say that the visitors are beautiful people sent by God. The church father is convinced that the aliens, doomed creatures created for the total destruction of humanity, for he does not trust the visitors. At this time, Tyler returns home from a ship excursion. His mother calls the guy over to watch a cool video. It turns out a woman has hacked into the guy's network, 
and found out his deepest secrets. The agent informs Brighter's parents, about the vandalism, and the sketches on the city walls. She finds links that give away these informational sites, which destroys her mother's life. The woman tries to talk to Tyler to find out his motivations against normalcy. The boy only blames what he has done on his mother, who spends too little time with him. Mr. Buchan is chosen as a journalist, for a frank interview with the leader of the visitors. While having lunch, Ryan again receives a phone call, which he declines. His girlfriend tries to find out who keeps calling the man, but the questions are ignored. In the meantime, FBI agents are sorting through fake IDs. Passport numbers, and ID numbers, don't exist in the database. The girl discovers the identity of the murdered guy, who turns out to be always worms. The agents re-enter the building, which turns out to be deserted. The bosses announce that they are vetting new personnel, and the detailed confidentiality of police information. Ignoring Ryan, they force a buddy to visit him at the center. Devil tries to get him back on the team, but the guy refuses. Paradise's choices, greatly affect teamwork, and the lives of humanity. Upon his return, the guy risks his fiancé's life, which stops the illegal activity. In the church cathedral, a wounded man appears, corroborating the guy's words. He is happy that the minister does not trust the visitors, for the aliens want to take over humanity. Severely wounded, forces the man to give the envelope with the pictures to Jake to find out the situation. The strange man, explains that the answers are inside the secret address. The journalist goes to the alien ship to ask Anna some questions. The woman asks, not to show the aliens in a bad light. The broadcast must be as pleasant as possible, and promote trust in the visitors. At the last moment, Anna practically cancels the broadcast. The chief offers the journalist a progressive career, in exchange for a happy interview. The agents gather for a meeting, where a gathering of strangers is planned. The woman refuses to be escorted by the police, and leaves on her own for the special operation. At the entrance, the girl is carefully screened and escorted to a separate room. The ringleaders offer to administer a small dose of painkillers, which alarms the visitors. The V-ship begins conducting a live broadcast. The journalist learns the main information about the alien planet, and tries to lead up to the main questions. At this time, the agent and the rest of the meeting are cut into the area of the skull where the drug is to be injected. After successfully passing the test, Devil realizes that the participants are not visitors. It turns out that the visitors have been living on the planet for a long time, much to the surprise of those present. For decades they've been planning to destroy humanity. The visitors have sent their intelligence agents into every vital area of humanity. They rule everywhere, whether in churches, business, the police, or the military. Settling among humans, the V's are slowly destroying human heritage. Tyler continues to listen to the dubious news, enjoying Anna's voice. It is likely that many people trust the visitors, as they continue to promote their destructive plans. The starting point of the world's destruction has been humanity's trust in the visitors. The creatures, who make mankind believe in great gratitude, and innovative technology, which only leads to the destruction of the world. When people come to their senses, it will be too late, for humanity will have already vanished without a trace. In the meantime, Tyler signs a booklet leading a guy to an ambassadorial job. The meeting turns out to be Jake, who has an envelope with pictures of the visitors living on the planet. The faces turn out to be very familiar to the agent, and the woman recalls the fake passport information. Agent Erica meets Jake, who previously helped the investigation greatly. A mob of cops bursts into the building, shooting up the people's gathering without a trace. Erica takes a swing at George, suspecting him of aiding and abetting the visitors, but the church father distracts the girl. They leave the building and try to calm down. George is approached by Ryan, who offers to team up and pursue a career together. He admits that he was hasty in his decisions, because the guy needs help. Ryan decides to break up with the girl, as she is now in danger. The journalist's successes are remembered by the alien government. Now, every important message from Anna, will be accompanied by a journalist. At this time, Ryan arrives home. The man catches Vel very upset, because of the strange calls. The girl suspects him of cheating, but finds an engagement ring. Ryan confesses that he loves the girl dearly, and moves the moment of separation to another time. Erica and Jake settle down on the roof of a building, where they calm down a bit. They are going to create a confrontation, and fight the aliens. It turns out the visitors are equipped with the strongest weapon of all, love. It is this feeling that makes people do strange things, regardless of their desires. Tyler forges his mother's signature and goes to the embassy center. The guy meets his lover Lisa, who previously won his heart. Now, he's surrounded by weakness, for he won't be able to leave the ambassadorial seat on short notice. In the meantime, Erica and Jake spot a ship headed for a warehouse. They suspect that phone calls may be tapped, so they call from a pay phone. It turns out that the call has been intercepted by the visitors, who are guided by motion trackers. The round vessels notice movement near the booth, and head toward the couple. 
they manage to run into the alley, thereby, breaking up the small vessel. Erica orders the boy to go home immediately. The girl warns him that it is becoming dangerous to live, and people cannot be trusted. Erica returns home, where she again finds Tyler missing. At that moment, something smashes the kitchen window. Her mother arms herself with a bat, and goes to check out the crooks. The bully turns out to be Tyler, who arrives home later in the morning. The guy lies, saying that he spent the night at his best friend's house. Erica returns to the conversation, where she warns of the V's danger. Tyler promises that he will not communicate with them again, and will end all strange activities. The guy goes to bed, which calms Erica down a bit. Once in the room, Tyler pulls out his work uniform, which he hides under the bed. Three weeks after the diplomatic election, a decision can be made about relations with the visitors. After the terrible news, Erica gets a work call. Edward tries to find out Devil's whereabouts, but the girl doesn't know the answer. The agent is quickly summoned to work, for the dangerous guy is gone. Ryan is resting with his girlfriend after a rough night. His arm remains injured, but hides beneath a large band-aid. The man goes out to the bathroom to wash the wound off. A journalist keeps working on alien interviews. He is often summoned to various meetings, where the system has long been set up. On his way to the office, Erica is clipped by Poole, who is concerned about the agent's disappearance. Devil's wife, has been trying all morning to figure out the man's whereabouts, but all searches are unsuccessful. Jake is met by an FBI agent who invites her to a little interrogation of the murdered man. Erica is persistently interrogated until Devil's car shows up in town. The team goes in search of the agent, which proves inconclusive. Erica finds Devil's phone, and gives it to Edward. People are short on information, as Anna's answers are completely uninformative. A journalist is about to pull an interview where he learns the information he needs. Vale gives the ring back to the guy, as she's not sure what he wants. She asks him to give it to her when she's fully prepared for married life. The next morning, the guys go to their new job at the embassy. Lisa greets Tyler, and gives him many compliments. Jake reflects on what has happened, for he has remained silent about the V's danger. The agent team learns about the situation at the warehouse, after which Edward interrogates Erica. The agent was worried about leaking information, and covered up as much as possible about what was going on at night. Lisa takes a picture on the guy's phone to stay in technical memory. A protest escalates, which forces the guys to take urgent action. Devil tapes a huge scratch on Ray, who admits to having a crush on the man. He tries to find out how many people are willing to fight. Devil turns off his buddy's consciousness, for he stops trusting. It turns out that Jake gave up all the pictures for the medium. The guy was worried that they might be stolen by the V's, so he decided not to hide the photo's whereabouts. The girl repeats that people can't be trusted, after which the priest just walks away. Edward invites the girl into his office, where he accuses the agent of lying. He pulls out a recording of the phone call, which forces Erica to confess. The girl convinces him that Devil is a traitor and is cooperating with the visitors. This information seems strange to Edward, and he ignores all attempts at proof. Erica apologizes to the priest, and asks for help in the general investigation. Jake refuses, and decides to go on with his normal life. Devil's wife notices a strange pattern in her husband's work calls. It turns out that Devil has been calling only two numbers, one of which belongs to his wife. The calls went through the international calling system, so it's hard to trace the number. Twenty minutes before each special, Devil calls an unknown number. Afterward, Rai gets a call from Devil that forces him to leave the girl. Within minutes, he has learned all the information about Vel, much to the guy's dismay. Lisa says goodbye to Tyler. The girl says that the guy is going to get fired and she has a lot of trouble because of the references. The journalist continues to work with the V's, recording strange interviews. In one of them, the man reports that after a full investigation, a government commission has announced that the visitors in the United States have decided to establish diplomatic relations. A limited number of visitors will be issued visas to travel in our country. Anna expresses her great gratitude, for the trust, and submission of the inhabitants of the United States. The journalist receives a call from Anna, who thanks the man for his good work. Erica meets Jake on a city street. They discuss the news, which makes them feel strongly disgusted. By day, Jake was afraid of the establishment of the underground, but after the terrible announcement, he cannot keep quiet. Erica provides a complete list of residents who have ever called the FBI on the issue of aliens. They plan to find important fellow citizens, to help the country together. The girl returns home, where Tyler finally stays home. The guy looks at Lisa's picture, for he misses the visitors greatly. An unfamiliar man regains consciousness while in a huge, bright office. A new one from the visitors, or a rebel to help exorcise them?